Lighter, leaner and better to drive, Audi's second generation A5 Sportback is a classier proposition than its predecessor. As before, there's coupe styling, married to a couple of rear passenger doors and hatchback practicality. Plus, this time round, there are smarter looks, even more impressive build quality and cutting-edge technology. Can this second-generation A5 Sportback really match its rear-driven competitors when volume versions have to use a front-driven setup that you'd find in a common family hatch? Well, you really might wonder on that score, but on the move, this Audi gets remarkably close to the dynamic standards that are set by rivals. The reasons why have a great deal to do with the stiff, sophisticated new MLB Evo platform and the high-tech, fully independent five-link front and rear suspension arrangement that can be embellished with adaptive damping on request. Also freshly developed for this Mark II model is a seven-speed S-Tronic Auto gearbox featuring efficient dual-clutch technology that couldn't be had on the front-driven versions of the previous generation model. Included across the range is the usual drive select vehicle dynamic system that in its standard form allows you to tweak the steering feel, uh, the throttle response and the gear shift timings to suit the way that you want to drive. Under the bonnet, most buyers opt for the 190 PS 2 litre TDI diesel that we're trying in this case. Uh, quattro all wheel traction and auto transmission are optional here, but both features are mandatory if you choose any other engine in the range. There are two 3-litre TDI variants developing either 218 or 286 PS. Otherwise, the petrol options include a 252 PS 2-litre TFSI 4-cylinder variant or the 354 PS 3-litre TFSI V6 that's used in the potent S5 model. And that storms to 62 miles an hour in just 4.7 seconds. If efficiency is a greater priority for you though, uh, this 2-litre TDI S-Tronic variant is the most frugal model in the lineup and that's able to manage 68.9 mpg on the combined cycle and 108 grams per kilometer of co2. Imagine what an A4 saloon might look like if it had a hatchback, it was slightly wider and lower and had an A5 coupe nose and you're pretty much picturing this sportback model. This time around the car has a more sophisticated feel and almost everywhere you look there's a chamfered surface or an intricately fashioned part that's clearly been carefully considered and then carefully considered all over again. Time to take a seat inside where you'll find yourself in a cabin that we think will really sell you this car. Now, one of the few things that motoring experts agree on is that Audi just sets the standard by which other automotive interiors have to be judged. And this one is, as usual, very difficult to criticise. We especially like the seats, particularly these leather and Alcantara trim sports ones. All A5 seats are anatomically shaped with head restraints that can be optionally specified to move not only for height but also for distance from the head. And they position you perfectly in front of a magnesium framed, leather stitched, three spoke multifunction steering wheel, which in this case has uh, got perforated leather insets and gear shift paddles for the Estronic automatic transmission. Now in standard models, you'd view through this wheel two conventional analog dials separated by the usual information screen. Here though, as you can see, uh, we've got something much nicer than that, the optional virtual cockpit, which replaces the entire instrument binnacle with a 12.3 inch LCD color monitor. And it has a layout that's fully digital and customizable with these smart 3D graphics and highly detailed effects. Anything this setup can't tell you will almost certainly be covered by the slimline MMI infotainment display that dominates the top of this dashboard. And now it's seven inches in size on standard models or 8.3 inches if you opt for the top MMI Navigation Plus with MMI Touch system that we're trying here. It's crisp 3D maps and responsive NVIDIA graphics. Let's take a seat in the rear. Now it isn't until you pull open the frameless door and duck slightly to avoid the swept back coupe roof line and try this part of the car that you begin to appreciate the importance of this Mark II model's small but significant increase in exterior size. The interior has gained 17 millimetres of length this time around and the result of that is that passengers back here get 24 mils more knee room than the previous generation model could offer plus there's 11 mils more shoulder and two. 
So finally, let's take a look in the boot. Now you access this via the standard powered tailgate, which can be optionally specified to rise with a swipe of your foot beneath the bumper, which is very useful if you're approaching the car laden down with bags. Now once the hatch rises, a 480 litre capacity is revealed. In summary, this is exactly what Ingolstadt promised, an intelligent evolution of a car that stacks up on paper and at last can more credibly manage to seat up to five people. It's all enough to make this A5 Sportback a hard option to ignore if you fit its target market. For a relatively small premium over an A4, it delivers for you a more stylish, it's still pretty practical package. One thing is certain, here's another very desirable Audi. Thank <laughs> you.